So uh, I, I, came, I came today to preach, and I'm going to preach, glory to God. And I need you to turn in your Bibles to 2 Kings chapter 2. 2 Kings chapter 2 and verse number 9 is we'll be, we'll be reading in just a moment. Take your finger, mark 2 Kings chapter 2, 9. Hang out there for just a moment. And uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get to the verses in just a minute. I'm going to preach to you if you're taking notes and you want to write this down. I, boy, I feel the anointing of the Holy Ghost in this room today. My God, I feel him in this room. I, I want you to write this down at the top of your page. The sermon title is in the form of a question, and I ask this question today. Can you picture it? Can you picture it? How many of you have ever been with somebody and they were trying to, to share with you an idea that they had or a particular thing that they really wanted you to grasp it and get it? They said, they'll say to this, picture this. Huh? How many of you ever said that? Picture this. See, I could get you, I could give you a mental picture. Picture this, fried chicken. Picture this. Oh. Man, this church ain't saved. <laughs> picture this. Picture this. Pic picture, picture a key lime cake set in front of you right now. Picture this. Red velvet. Picture this. I'm going to quit because y'all going to leave church and go to eat. And I won't have time to preach. Picture this. Get a picture. When, they, when a person says picture this, they want this. Watch this now. They want you to get a mental image of what they're talking about. They want you to form a mental image. They want you to get a picture of what they're talking about in your mind. They want it. You know what I found out about visionaries? I found out that visionaries are the people are people that have the ability to picture things in their mind long before it ever comes to pass. They have that ability. They have the ability. The, the, the Bible says this. The Bible says without a vision, people perish. One translation said they run wild if they don't have a vision. If they cannot, if they do not have the ability to picture their future, to get a picture of what God's going to do. Mm -hmm. and, and, and here's what the word vision there, it means, it literally means divinely revealed knowledge. In other words, the picture that you have is a picture that God has given you. That's going to mean something to you in just a few minutes. It's a picture God has given you. It is, the Bible calls them imaginations. Amen. That you can, it, it, you can imagine yourself doing a particular thing. You've got to learn how to have a spiritual imagination. It's biblical. 2 Kings chapter 2 verse 9, the Bible said, When they came to the other side, Elijah said to Elisha. You know the story. You know the relationship. You understand that Elijah is the mentor of Elisha. And the Bible said, tell me what I can do for you before I'm taken away, Elijah says to Elisha. And Elisha replied, please let me inherit a double share, your King James would say portion, a double share of your spirit and become your successor. You have asked a difficult thing, Elijah said. But he said, if you see me, notice that, look at that in the scripture. If you see me when I'm taken from you, then you will get your request. But if not, then you won't. As they were taken along and talking, suddenly a chariot of fire appeared, drawn by horses of fire, and it drove between the two men, separating them, and Elijah was carried away by a whirlwind into heaven. As you continue to read the story, you'll realize that Elisha was there to see Elijah taken away, and therefore he receives a double portion of the anointing of God that was on Elijah's life. But before he gets to this place, he has to walk out a season of his life where he doesn't 
see this happening with his natural eye, but he has to see it through a different kind of eye. I have to propose a question to you today. What drove Elisha to keep following Elijah? Oh, well, Pastor, it's a simple answer to that. He wanted the double portion. He wanted the, the double share of the anointing. Now, I understand he had a desire, but there was something even greater, I feel like, that drove him. I believe that Elijah could already see himself through the eyes of the Spirit. He could see himself in Elijah's shoes. He could see himself operating as Elijah operated. He could see himself prophesying like Elijah prophesied, foretelling of things that were to come. He could see himself uh, uh, as uh, doing the miraculous things that Elijah did. You can imagine that Elijah sitting there with his eyes closed, imagining himself in, in the position and in, in, in the place of Elijah. And because he was, he, he was focused on, on, on this middle picture, of finding himself in the position and in the, the shoes of Elijah. He had a driving force behind him. He was driven to follow Elijah because your Bible would say as you continue, uh, as you would follow the story before this, if you backed up and read before this, you would see that, that Elijah on many occasions tried to get Elisha to stay, to leave him alone, to stop here and don't go there. But Elijah, Elisha kept following Elijah. What was it that drove Elisha to follow Elijah from Gilgal over to Bethel? Why, when, 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 when Elijah tried to get him to stay at Gilgal, stay here, leave me alone. And, and, but yet Elisha said, it's not going to happen. I'm following, and he followed him to Bethel. And when Elijah got to, to Bethel, he once again tried to shake loose Elisha. And he said, I, I, I'm just, uh, I want you to stay here. But Elisha said, uh-uh, I'm still. I'm on your heels. I'm going. I'm after something. And what was it that drove him from Bethel on to Jericho and then from Jericho ultimately to, to the Jordan? What was it that he, why did he keep going? And even furthermore, what was it that would cause him? Now watch this. The Bible said that in every city that Elisha arrived with Elijah, that the prophets of that city would continue to say to Elisha, you know that your master is about to be taken from you. You know that you're everywhere, whether it was Gilgal, whether it was Jericho, whether, whether it was Bethel, no matter where he went, he ran into the prophets of God, the voices of God. People that were held in high esteem and with high respect were always saying to Elisha, your master's going to be taken from you. Your master's going to be taken from you. And Elisha had the same response for every prophet that told him that. Be quiet. Be quiet. Don't say that. And our natural mind would think that the reason that Elisha would say be quiet was because, it, it, because we would think that it struck fear in him that he wasn't going to get what God said he had. Because he was afraid that Elijah would be taken and he wouldn't see him. No, I've come by to submit to you. I don't believe that's what it was about at all. I believe that Elisha had already seen himself in the shoes of Elijah. He had his eye, his natural eyes closed, his spiritual eyes open, and he was focused on his future, and he would not allow what everybody was saying to him to distract him from what he had a picture of. To distract him from what he had imagined, what he had, if you will, in his imagination. <laughs> Y'all know. Let me tell you, the Bible has, it is clear in the fact that God has given us as children of God, he has given us the gift of imagination. Really? Oh, yeah. Let me show you what I'm talking about. Imagination is a gift from God. And the, imagine, the gift of imagination was given to you to foresee 
the blessings that God had for you in your future. Your imagination was given to you to help you believe God for things that you could not see with your natural eye. You had to imagine yourself there. You don't believe it? Ephesians 3.20 says it. Now, he's able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you could ever ask or think or imagine. Imagine. So, God has given us an, an imagination. But, and, and the imagination that God gave you was to believe God for what God was going to do in your future. But how many of you know, let me, let me, let me tell you something. I, I've... I've, I've begun to realize something about human nature. It's, it's, the, it's, it's the nature of, uh, of, 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 of men to use their imaginations for negative things. Have you ever noticed that it's real easy for somebody to receive a report about something and then imagine their self in a worse condition? Imagine that somebody, you know, taking their car. Imagine their house being foreclosed on. Imagine their self laid up in the hospital. Imagine their self this. Imagine. It, and we're, we're, we have a tendency to use our imagination to do those things and what has happened is it's, it's, the, it's the trick of the enemy to get you to pervert the gift of imagination that God gave you. That's true, Pastor, too? Yeah. 2 Corinthians 10.5. Cast down every high thing, every imagination that would exalt itself against the knowledge of God. Watch this now. Remember I said God gave us the ability to imagine, and then he said bring back into captivity every thought, every imagination, every picture, everything you see in your mind. Bring it back and align it again with what God's Word has said. And anything that the enemy would cause you to imagine, anything that the enemy would cause you to picture that does not align itself with the Word of God, the Bible said cast that thing. Get rid of it. God gave you the ability to imagine for the purpose uh, of seeing what he's about to release in your life. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 7 is a short verse of Scripture, but this is what your Bible says. It says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. That same verse from the New Living Translation, I like it better, it says, for we live by believing, not by seeing. This walk that we walk and life we live, we live by, by, by not what we see, but by what we believe. We don't live by what is revealed to the natural eye, but we live by what we can imagine in our spirit by looking through the eyes of faith. Let me give you a natural example. God gives you a $2 million dream, but you open up your natural eyes and see $17.27 in your checking account. You open your, bank, your, your, your savings account book, and it, and it don't have but $24.87 in it. Hello? So when you look at that, you can't believe God for a $2 million dream. But when you close your eyes and you get a picture of a God who owns the cattle of a thousand hills 
and the heels that they're on. When you get a picture and go ahead and start thinking about and start dwelling on what God said and you get a picture of the fact that, that, that God shall supply all of our needs not according to what you got going on at the bank right now but according to his riches in glory in Christ Jesus. So now I start to use my imagination. Now I start to see myself somewhere that I'm actually not. That's what the Bible's talking about. I'm living Living my life now by faith and not by what I see with my natural eye. That's why it's important that you get this. Notice, that's why you understand. You need to understand it, Hebrews 11, 1, you need to understand it far beyond just memorizing it. Now faith is the substance of the things that I hoped for. That's, that's future tense. That's stuff out here. It's the evidence of things not seen. It's better understood when I read it right here. Faith shows, watch this, faith shows. Somebody say faith shows. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. Faith shows us. What does faith do? Faith shows. Faith, watch this, ladies and gentlemen, as you close your eyes, faith causes you to picture something that has not yet been revealed to your senses. Faith causes you to picture it. Look at somebody next to you say, you got to picture it. Faith causes you to draw a picture of something in your mind. Faith shows the reality of what we hope for. It is the evidence of the things. Faith is what? Faith's the evidence of the things that we don't see with this natural eye. Faith is, our, is the eyes of our spirit. Faith causes us to imagine the impossible. Faith causes us to see bigger things and stronger things. Faith is, and faith is so much more advanced. The eyes of your faith are far more advanced than your natural eyes. Y'all better write that down. Let me tell you, I said the eyes of your faith are far, far more advanced than your natural eye. Watch this. Look at me. Everybody look at me. You could, you, every person in this room, you could have 20-20 eye vision, but you cannot change the limitation of your natural vision because your natural vision can only see what's going on now. Think about that. All you can see is now with these. You hear me? That's what the scriptures talk about. We walk by faith and not by what we see. So how do I get by? <laughs> so how do I get by? How do I get beyond this point? Now faith is. Now. Pastor, I got $17.27 now. How can I believe God for a $2 million vision? How can I believe God for that? Now, faith is. So what do I do? I close the eyes that are limited to the now, and I open my spiritual eyes that can see something greater in the future. The ability that God gave us to imagine things. And when I start to imagine what I'm supposed to imagine and cast down what I'm not supposed to imagine, then I can see something bigger than what is in front of me right now. Your natural eye can only see now. The eyes of your faith can see tomorrow, the next day, the next week, the next month, the next year. That's why we as children of God, we don't, do it. We don't walk by what, we saw, by what we see. We don't walk by these now because these natural eyes are limited in what they can see. And that's why I got to make up my mind today that I'm going to paint a picture in my mind. I'm going to close my natural eyes and I'm not going to worry about today's limitations because my God is not limited to what I can see with my natural eye. I may not be laying my eyes on my blessing right now, but I know when I close my eyes by faith that my blessing is waiting on me in my future. I wish I could find 25 people at least in this room today that God has called you to be a dreamer. God has called you to be a visionary. God has called you out of where you are to a greater place and because you're going to a greater place place you can close your natural eyes today and you can imagine yourself somewhere greater than where you already are somebody put your hands together and bless God because you are somebody that can picture it
got to picture it. You never get anywhere until you can first see it. I believe Noah saw the ark long before he built it. I don't believe all that. All right, well, let me ask you this. Before you can build a magnificent building, there first has to be a drawing. And the drawing comes from a vision that someone has. I want it to be this big. I want it to be this wide. I want it to contain this and that. Somebody that's got a vision can sit down with somebody that has the ability to draw it and they can put it on paper. And once it has been put on paper, then they can make it become a reality. I can tell you long before the ark was ever finished, Noah saw him and his family floating on that bad boy. Are you listening to me? He had to see it in his mind. God gave him a vision of it. He had to be able to draw it somewhere. There's a drawing of that thing somewhere that Noah had said, hey, it's got to be, this is what God said. And he had to see it through the eyes of faith because if he was looking through the natural eyes, all he was looking at was a corrupt generation all around him saying, this old man has lost his mind. This old man has got dementia. This old man is crazy because he's talking about water falling out of the sky. He's talking about water falling in such a great amount that it will cover the highest mountain peak and it had never rained before. But no, you know what he had? He had to close his eyes every day and walk around and say, God has given me a dream of a boat. I got to build a boat. I got to build it big. I got to build it wide. I'm looking for somebody in this room that to close your eyes and not look at the people around you and everybody who's tried to rip you of your destiny and your dream and your purpose and you can imagine yourself. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell y'all something. There have been a lot of bad boats built but the ark had to be one more bad boat to house everything it housed and to separate everything that had to be separated and to do everything that had to be done on the inside of that thing. In order for it to take place, let me, no, let, let me just say this to you. Hear me. Without an imagination, it was impossible. Noah could have never built a boat like that without first seeing it through the eyes of faith. Well, I, I don't believe that, Pastor. I just don't believe it. But that's, see, that's the problem. In that same, see, this is what you need to understand. Hebrews 11.1, 1, that's just one verse. That whole chapter is faith. By faith, as a matter of fact, there's a verse in there that substantiates what I'm telling you. There's a verse in there that says that Noah, by faith, Noah built that ark. Faith is what? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What is faith? Faith is seeing something with your natural, uh, your spiritual eyes before it's revealed to your natural eyes. So that tells me that he first had to imagine it in the spirit before it became a reality. God's given you a gift. He's given me a gift of imagination. We're not there because we can't imagine it. Now, let me tell y'all something. We, church folks, especially Pentecostal people, Pentecostal charismatic, we have a hard time with this stuff because we were, we were raised so much in the gloom and doom and despair and agony on me. It's hard for, us to talk, for somebody to talk to us about the power of our imagination. But we got where we are because God gave people visions. Huh? Let me tell you something. 
what you read in the book of Revelation is a vision. Huh? It's a vision. The Bible says that, that John the Revelator was in the Spirit on the Lord's day when God began to what? By the Spirit reveal what was to come. And, 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 and listen, what a spiritual vision or picture God gave him. You got your Bible? Open it up. Revelation 21. I ain't going to read it. We don't have time. But when you get home today, you'll be able to read what, what, what John the Revelator wrote as God gave him a mental picture in the spirit. See, listen, when you, we, when you, the Bible says the, the, the just live by faith and, and, and we live by the spirit. And we have eyes and ears that, that, spiritual ears that hear, spiritual eyes that see. We live by the Spirit. So if you're always walking, listen, if you always are, if everything that goes on in your life is determined by what you can feel, what you can touch, what you can smell, what you can see, what you can hear, what you can put your hands on, if your life is limited to those things, ladies and gentlemen, you're never going to see what God has in store for you. When you can get beyond your senses of what you can see with your natural eye, what you can feel with your natural hand, what you can hear with your natural ear, what you can smell with your nose, when you can get beyond on that and start using your the spiritual eyes that God has given you and the spiritual ears that God has given you because see there's something greater that God has for you in your future but your natural eyes are limiting you and keeping you from where they are your natural imaginations the thing that you're in this natural the perversion of your imagination is keeping you from where you need to be with God but if you could surrender this thing to God and, li and listen and, and understand that God's got greater and God's got more and God's got beyond and that God wants to do what exceed God wants to do what? Abundantly. God wants to do what? Above all that I could ever what? Imagine. Above all that you can imagine what? In your natural imagination. He wants you to leave your natural imagination and move into your spiritual imagination so you can start to begin to see what John saw when he was on the Isle of Patmos and he was in the spirit on the Lord's day. He began to see a heaven. He began to see walls of jasper and streets of gold and gates of pearl. Can I tell you God can give you a divine revelation of where he's taking you. God can give you a vision. God can give you a dream. And God can cause you to see it with your spiritual eyes. Before you ever see it. Now here, let me tell you what I'm going to do. And some of y'all ain't going to, you, you're not going to want to do this because you graduated school a long time ago and when you walked out that last day whether it was high school or college or whatever you said you know what I'm done with homework I'll never do homework again the rest of my life <laughs> anybody ever said that wave your hand come on <laughs> but I'm going to give you homework today I want to give you homework I want to give you something that God would have you to do today this is what I want you to do you close your eyes all over the room you close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes for just a moment. And I want you to take just a few seconds and I want you to get a mental picture of the promise of God in your life. Of a vision that God has given you. A dream. A place that you know God said he was taking you. Something God said he was going to do in your life and I want you to get a picture of it. Just see it. Now if you've got a pretty decent picture in your mind with your eyes still closed, just lift your hand. So I, you, you got it. This is what your homework is. Habakkuk said this. He said, write the vision and make it plain. 
So this is what I want you to do. I want you to take what God has given you in your, with your spiritual eyes, and I want you to draw it, and I want you to put it on paper. And I want you to put it in a, I want you to put it in a, a picture frame. I want you to hang it on the wall, put it on, or, or put it on your refrigerator, put it on your desk, put it somewhere where you can see it. And I'm going to prophesy here today that out of this room in upcoming weeks, people are going to, you're going to take this thing this week and you're going to write it down. You're going to draw, do whatever it needs to be, however it needs to manifest on paper. And you're going to put it somewhere and you're going to, through your spiritual eyes, believe God for that particular thing to come to pass. And I prophesy that in a few short weeks, people are going to walk in here in this church, and you're going to walk in here with the picture you drew this week of what you had imagined and in, in one hand, and in the other hand, you're going to hold the actual picture of the manifestation of it. That, that God has begun to work and make it come to pass. I believe there's coming that day when you'll walk in here, if it's two weeks from now, six weeks from now, three months from now, whatever, you're going to walk in here that, with that in your hand saying, Pastor, I remember it August the 23rd in the 11 o'clock service. This is what I did. And here, here it is. This is what God did. This is what God did. Can you believe God for that? Can you do that this week? Can you make that happen? I believe you can. With that mental image in your mind, I'm going to ask you to stand this morning, and I'm going to pray over you all over the room today. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Having already taking the life of a bear and a lion David could see himself taking the life of a giant can you see it today can you use your God given gift of imagination to see where God is taking you to see what God is going to do through you. Lift your hands today. I see some of you already. I, I see the tears flowing down your face. I see that today faith has been stirred in you. Faith's been stirred in you. Faith's been stirred in you today by God's word. And Father, now in the name of Jesus, talking to people, Lord, in this sanctuary all over this room, that God, these people, Lord, have the ability to imagine. To paint a picture in their minds of what you hold for them in their future. And Lord, my prayer is right now that they would, that picture would form and that they would remain faithful to what they see 
until it is revealed to their natural eye. Cause them to be faithful to their vision. Faithful to their dream. Faithful to what they see. Never to let go of what you have caused them today. Today, what you've caused them to imagine. Today, what you've caused them to see with their spiritual eyes. Help them to remain faithful by your grace and by your glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. Somebody give God a praise offering. Come on, somebody give God. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody give God a praise offering for what you see. Come on, praise him for what you see right now. 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 Praise him. Praise him for what you see right now. Praise him. Praise him for what you see right now. Praise him for what you see right now. Church. They are possible. Yes, they are. Possible. They are possible. And you let we be greater. You let My final word to you today is this. Everybody look at me. My final word to you today is this. If what you picture to you, what you picture today is valuable, then the, the Holy Spirit told me to tell you today, guard your picture. What you mean, Pastor? When you write that, you make it plain and you make it visible. Don't let everybody. Don't let everybody. If you let everybody talk about it, you let everybody put their hands on it, you let everybody give an opinion of it, then you don't value it. If they walk up and they open their mouth, to respond to it, say, hold up. If you don't believe it, don't say nothing. Just keep going, honey. Keep going. If you don't trust God with it, just keep on going, baby. I can't, I can't, I can't afford to let you say anything against my vision. I can't, you got power in life. It, 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 uh, life and death is the power of life and death is in your tongue. I ain't gonna let you speak over it. I'm, no, no. You, you, you're done, baby. Go move on, move on. That's that ain't for you. Until you can learn to tell somebody that ain't for you, it ain't valuable to you. When it becomes valuable to you, you'll guard it. When you guard it, it'll come to pass. You hear me? You can believe God for it. Let me tell y'all something. You know what I see? I'm going to close my eyes, and I'm going to imagine. I'm going to imagine you walking down this aisle. I'm going to imagine you waving that picture you drew when you got home today. And I'm going to imagine somebody taking me out to the parking lot and showing me that car you drove on that, that you drew on that picture. I'm going to imagine somebody saying, Pastor, I need you to show up at this address right here because I'm going to show you what I drew on that picture. I can imagine. I'm, I, I, I'm going to imagine somebody's child. Walking this aisle, giving their heart to God. Because today you dared to get a picture of it. A picture of God doing something supernatural in their life. Amen. I believe somebody's leaving here with greater faith today, don't you? 
I said, I believe somebody's leaving with greater faith. 